Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Gaming Jack 24/7 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Dante's Inferno. In the last episode, we pretty much did the beginning intro sequence of this game, as well as we took care of. We learned how to fight. We beat up the Grim Reaper, and we got his scythe, which you can see is on my back still. And in this episode, we're going to continue on down towards hell itself. Now, actually, the first thing I want to do in this episode is I want to spend some of my souls on some upgrades. Now, as you can see here, we haven't gone up to even level 1 in anything, although we do have a lot of experience in Unholy. But I kind of want to buy... Uh, I want to buy a move right now. Mainly what I want to buy right now is I'm going to buy Impaler, because this just makes my it makes the heavy attack actually worthwhile since there's two attacks instead of just one. So after we've done that, let's continue on down here. Now there's nothing up here left to do except to climb down onto this thing, slide our way down. I forgot. All right, RB is to slide fast, A jump down. Yeah, and if you haven't no noticed, just in case you forget, the game will give you the little uh, indicator cues as to what you need to do to move on. Now what? There we go. I wanted to see. All right, so our health is fine. Our redemption is perfectly fine. And here's this guy. I forgot his name, but you will see him a lot. I prayed for her to command me. Beatrice. I fear my friend has gone astray, she said. Help him, Virgil. So that he okay, his name's Virgil. I, I, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. I just want to listen to that real quick. But basically, what you're saying, what you find out is Beatrice made a deal with the devil, essentially, that Dante would be faithful. And as you can clearly see, Dante wasn't exactly faithful here. So, alright, so we got a magic called uh, Righteous Path. Now, if you hold down LB, in this case, it's uh, set to Y. So, excuse me. If you hold down LB and press Y, you'll do Righteous Path, which is um, just a dash attack, and leaves a trail of icy shards in its wake. You can pretty much see it right there. It's there you go, all set. Now this purple thing is mana, mana in this game. You know, usually mana is your magic equivalent, and in this game, your magic is your uh, special abilities like that. So now we have a bunch of these guys back, and I'm gonna show off, that's Righteous Path right there. That's, um, that's the other thing we just picked up. Now I'm gonna do it again, because I kinda like it, I don't know why. Early, early game, Righteous Path is probably one of the better moves in this game overall. Um, there we go, I just did it again. Unfortunately, as you can see, Righteous Path does not work against uh, flying enemies. It's only for ground enemies. And wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Rock, rock, it's just crashing. Oh! Almost forgot about that guy. Yeah. I really wish I had done my research on the name of the enemies in this game. But yeah, you're going to see this guy a lot. And he's ve he, he can hurt us a lot. Like, he's you can see, he's really big. And the easiest way to dodge in this case is since I have so much mana, just do Righteous Path a little bit to weaken him. Oh, also, uh, if you know down at the bottom, you can see LB and RB. That's our redemption meter, and that's actually full. So I'm actually going to show that off right now. So you press it, and you basically go full rage mode. You're you're not invincible, but you're essentially invulnerable. Like, your attacks won't knock you back or anything, but you can still rip into them, and you can see we're just dealing up. Like, he can't harm us right now. Okay, and we ran out of um, redemption. Obviously, as you can see, it's a it's a pretty short bar right now, but it will get longer as the game goes on. So I'm just gonna sit here and continue to watch my uh, seat. Now we go. We got our quick time event, and now press X to get out of the way. Now in this case, we're gonna press Y, press B to grab this guy, jump on, and we rip him in half because pretty much everything we rip him in half in this game. And now we get control of the beast. Now you press X to pound your fist, Y to stomp, B you get to bring your fire, and RT you get to grab enemies. Grabbing enemies isn't too complicated. I mean, all you do for grab, you just grab them, press it again, I believe. Come on, press it again. Never mind. If you press Y, you smash them into the ground. See, you can see here, Y was our little, the little stomp attack. X is smashing people with your fists of fury. Now I want to just go, come on, grab, grab an enemy. Grab, there we go. And now if you grab him and press, say, B, no, X. If you press X, you eat him. And eating him is just kind of interesting. I mean, how many times do you really eat people with a giant beast? Not too many, I would assume, because, you know, we don't live in this world. Obviously, it doesn't heal you, but at the same time, 
You don't take damage while you're on top of the beast itself. However, the beast over time will succumb to damage, and eventually you will get knocked. Eventually he may die, and you could get knocked off the beast. Unfortunately, I cannot confirm this, but I I wish it was true. I hope it's true that if you eat the enemies, that it would. I feel like eating the enemies would heal you, considering you know you're kind of it's kind of your health source. Now I kind of wish I had grabbed. Oh man, can I get off this guy like temporarily? I just kind of want to smash these. Okay, never mind. I can still smash those. Awesome. Because I was worried about not being able to smash these um, little towers here. Because I wanted to make sure I got. Uh, I wanted to refill all my stats, and there was a couple fountains there for uh, just regular white souls to help us buy new upgrades. Now here, if you notice, this game has a lot of these like button mashing quick time events, pretty much spread out throughout the entire game, and that's kind of a thing. A lot of people don't notice, a lot of people complain about this, but a lot of people don't realize that this game does it well. Because it's not like, say, Uncharted, where you have a quick time event probably three times total throughout the entire gameplay. It's built into the combat system, it's built into your cutscenes, you're, you're ready to expect it. But, yeah, alright, you can see we got achievement unlocked, abandon all hope. That basically just says, hey, we finally made it to hell. If you haven't noticed, yeah, this is the story of, if, if you didn't know the story of Dante already, it's basically, yeah, Dante, um, Dante goes off to war, comes back, find out, finds out because he was unfaithful that he has to go save his, um, his beloved Beatrice and has to go through hell to save her. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything else. If you want to read the story, do that on your own. I don't, it's your choice. Now, damned climb, obviously, this is just climbing along vines, left stick any direction, A jumps, RB to slide. Essentially, slide is just move straight down. Your jump in this game is not is used. Also, you can spe it speeds up your approach to other areas. Oh man, I see that fountain there. I really want that fountain. But also, um, how do I explain this? In certain areas of the game, there's also gaps that you can go through. Where uh, well, there's gaps where you have to jump across, and obviously that's where your jump button comes along. Now we get another one of these little fountains here in front of the spewing fountain of dead bodies. And we get to climb, we get that, get some more white souls, and let's continue on our merry way. See, like, right here, gap jump. If you want to jump left, you hold left and press A. If you want to jump right, you hold right and press A. Now, in this case, I want to fall down. Now, can I do anything over here? I know there, all right, there's a fountain right there. Here's uh, Virgil, who tells us about this area. world we have now descended. Put all fear and cowardice aside. We have come to the cliffs above Acheron. Wretched souls walk this tortured path to board Karen's vessel. Yeah, I pretty much explained that there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, as I play this, I play with the TV screen low, so I don't have, you know, the volume from the video in the recording. Okay, so 30 pieces of silver. We found a silver Judas coin. Um, I completely forget what each does. I believe that's just a collectible in this game. It doesn't really give you anything in return if you find them all. I don't believe I've ever found them all. I will try to find as many things as I can to this game. I will try and find everything. I believe I know where the three uh, pieces, the three stones Beatrice are, but if I don't, I'm sorry. Now you can see there, a uh, giant boat with a head. That's Charon. He is essentially, uh, he's essentially what we know as, uh, I don't know, I call him the gatekeeper to hell. Because you can see all these faceless, nameless bodies there are dead people, essentially, on their way to hell to be judged and sent to their respective circle. Now, yeah, see, Shores of Acheron, that guy himself is known as Charon. And, wait, no, I don't, I actually don't want that. I completely forgot. Now, unfortunately, this activates the bridge, but the second you activate this bridge, enemies spawn. So, pretty, the game pretty much tells you, hey, you know that bridge you just activated? Well, screw you, you gotta go fight people. So what you do is you pretty much do your usual thing. You just toast everybody with your amazing cross powers and slice them to bits and just blow up everybody and just slice them up and it's just so much fun. Honestly, the gameplay, uh, I've, I've, uh, I would say some people might complain this uh, game has a very simplistic fighting style. I mean, it's basically... Essentially, this game is in itself a button masher. 
because there's not really any strategy to the fight. Mostly it's just, okay, hey, there's enemies. Just go hit this button a bunch of times and try and out. Come on, get across. There we go. Because honestly, if we had not done that eventually, they would just make us continue to fight these the same enemy over and over and over again until you just decide, hey, screw it. I'm going to go across the gap and do it myself. So here we go. We got some more white souls. Now, actually, can we check what we have for upgrades so far? Now, Divine Force, Divine Force level 2, Vindication. Uh, honestly, there's not really much I want to do. Actually, um, actually, I want to get Repayment, because Repayment, unfortunately, Repayment is what you need to be able to counter. Now, I've never really been great at counters, so I've never really done them too often in my, in my playthroughs of this game. I've been, I mostly just depend on just normal blocking or not, but obviously counter is you block at the right time, and if you counter, you can hit X or Y to attack your enemy. Now you can see here, this is more of a general style character. You can see he's got, when he does that, when he has, um, there's some moves where you can't stop his motion, like that one there. But those also where you see his at his uh, little sword thing right there. If it start if he knocks you back and that starts going red like that, dodge. That's unblockable. So you want to avoid that at all costs. So let's just sit here and continue to, to attack. Now sometimes he'll do that. He'll shove you back, but he won't exactly. Now just like the other guys, we can choose to absolve these guys, or we can just you know kill them and get unholy experience. Now I like um, again I like playing with the cross a lot. I will level up Unholy as well, but I will tell you right now, it is literally impossible. It's almost impossible, actually I believe it's impossible to even level up one track all the way on a single playthrough. Usually you have to go back in and basically play New Game Plus to get even, to get both the Unholy and Holy tracks fully filled. But for the time being, I'm just going to focus solely on being holy and being good, saving people. Because I feel like in the end, it actually also gives you more experience overall. Like I feel like what you'll see later. Uh, there's uh, other things we can do, but I'm just gonna roll this up. Can I go any? You see, if you don't roll this up all the way, you'll miss this fountain over here. But let's grab this real quick. This probably is going to be a piece of silver, I believe. Yep, piece of silver. Now more information on these. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, the the thing is, um, yeah, pretty much just, if you get, off, each time you get a pair of five, you get more souls, essentially. And also, you can see over there, Beatrice Stones are, if when you collect all three, you can auto-absolve the damned, so you don't have to play. There's essentially a little mini-game when you try and absolve the damned people. So instead of having to play that every time, all you would have to do is just, you know, you just click Absolve and you absolve them. But I kind of like playing the mini game because it gets you playing that mini game gets you souls, and obviously if you haven't noticed, you you want as many white souls as you can get. Oh man, I thought I made that. And once again, come on, just pull it. Man, I'm not exactly playing excellent today. Come on, just jump up here. There we go. Let's kick open this door. All right, let's go over here. There's some boxes we can break for some souls. For some souls. Okay, no souls. Fantastic. All right, let's talk to uh, Virgil again. All souls that die from every nation collect here as one. Karen's rough crossing awaits those who did not fear the Lord. Yeah, so we pretty much explained that here. If you weren't, you know, exactly the most perfect of holy, if basically if you were unholy in any way in your life, you end up getting sent here. Like, there's there's so many little levels. And the game through, I will be doing all the Virgil um, dialogues, if you haven't noticed, I, I kind of like them. So, it's just interesting to listen to them and play through it and whatnot. So, let's kill, uh, yeah, you can see here we got the wall, the cliche, walls of fire, where you can't escape, you have to just, it's, it's basically a forced enemy gauntlet. You know it, I know it, we just, yeah, we get it, just, we get it. Stop trying to mess with my combo. Come on, that was bull. Friggin' little birds. I hate them so much, and that's why I like upgrading the holy track so much. Because then you have the cross, which can easily deal with these guys. Ah, come on, strike them down, strike them down. Dodge. There we go. Come on. 
You need to die. Come on, stupid bird. I don't even know what they're. I don't know the names of the enemies in this game too well. All I know is they're just they're just they're jerks. See, you have a bunch of quick time events. You can use the joystick. You can just use a button mash. Anything, but pretty much the game. No matter what, it always keeps you involved, and I always like that about this game. All right, now if you can see over here, we have a we have our first damn soul. Now, let's see, let's grab this ma mana fountain, even though we really don't need it, as Charon looms in the background. Now we have our first un our first damn soul. This is Pontilus Pilate. His cowardice contributed to the suffering of one for his sins of many. Now he bears the weight of all in limbo. Now, obviously, you can see you can choose to punish or absolve him. If you punish him, you just kind of rip your sight through him, but we're going to absolve him, because I want to get the holy, holy experience, basically. Now you can see you have this little uh, mini game here. Now if you have all the pieces of Beatrice's cross, the little um, stones, you don't have to play this mini game. You just automatically can absolve them without playing it. But I like playing this mini game. I missed that soul, unfortunately. I'm sorry. But yeah, as you play this mini game, you get more souls for what you do, and that usually contributes to more, you know, more, you get more white souls for it and more experience overall. See, you get bonus souls from doing this. You get 30 souls per hit, and I got 30 sins, so that's 90 extra, 90 extra bonus souls there. And you can see we just unlocked holy level 1 there. The cross is now more powerful. Now, let's see what we got over here for upgrades. Since we do have a thousand souls, uh, holy barrage, basically the three part, I'm going to save up 2,000 souls for that. But also you can notice there's health bar here, mana bar, righteous path. Usually the holy side deals more with their magic, but there also is unholy magic as well. Um, but there's also, see, you can see you have um, you have pretty much upgrades for health and mana on both sides. So you don't have to worry about, hey, I picked I picked this one side. I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get an upgrade for either my health or my magic just because I picked this one side. No. Now you can see this door right here. We have to button mash to kill this guy and break through. Now we've got through here, and we're going to get another little cutscene describing more of Dante's background. Now we go back to the middle scene. This is pretty much everything we've seen already, so that's the only reason why I'm going to talk over it again. Because honestly, we, we, you don't need to hear this a second time. Do you really want to? Basically, this is just a reflection. Oh yeah, I promise to forsake all pleasures of the flesh, and then I'm going to betray you. See, now you get a little cutscene here with... If you haven't figured this out by now, that's Lucifer himself. Just a ghostly version. I have Beatrice there. Yep, he's basically just rubbing it in our face. I don't understand. Dante's like, I don't understand. I don't understand. It's like, come on, dude. You messed up. Your wife bet that you would not mess up, but you messed up, so that's all her fault. It's kind of, it's it's both your faults. You messed up, but she bet that you wouldn't mess up, so yeah. So he basically takes her away, even farther into hell, so we have to go even farther. And now we get another little gauntlet room. Fun, yay. See, now you can see our little, our cross is a little bit more powerful. We can still dodge roll and whatnot. Let's activate redemption, because I'm just like, I don't want to deal with you right now. And now I can just rip this guy apart, just not have any give, any cares. Oh man, I, I see that's also the problem. If you don't activate that quick time event uh, in time, you can sometimes lose the ability to even perform the quick time event. So yeah, that's something to watch out for. Because again, if you kind of want those quick time events, it gives you you get more you usually get more experience for doing the quick time events, and you also level up your. Um, your holy and unholy paths, respectively. So, uh, come on, come on. There we go. Let's get the. Let's get some absolving. Another good thing about this gameplay: enemies can't hurt you when you're absolving or not absolving, or just you know, if you're in one of those situations, the enemies won't attack you. They can't like stop. They can't like be like combo breaker and just stop you. No, they can't do that. They just kind of stand there and just wait for you to be done. Dodge. And that's another thing. See, personally, I don't like using the heavy attack if I only have the one attack. It's only good to me if I have the two. It just helps me out more. Okay, crud, crud, I almost missed that. 
but we get to absolve him as well. Let's get some more holy experience in here. And crud! I've been recording for 20 minutes now. Crud. I haven't done anything in this episode. I've been talking too much. Explaining everything. I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, Alright, well... I guess this is the end. Let's grab this fountain real quick and just get another piece of silver. Alright, so I guess this is the end of episode 2. So, thank you all for watching this. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you really like the video, maybe consider subscribing, if you haven't already. And until the next time, guys, this has been Gaming Jack 24-7, reminding you to just have a nice day. See you in the next one.